Good morning. The chapter for today is the Sangam Age. Let's see the subheadings of the part 1. Cultural and economic contacts between the northern and southern India. Sources to reconstruct the Sangam Age, which is divided into literary sources and archaeological sources. Next is the three kingdoms, the Chera, the Chola and the Pandya. After that, we have social conditions, where we will discuss on synthesis of two cultures, the caste, ruling class with the class of warriors and some other classes, the institution of marriage, position of woman, religion and religious rituals. The next one is economic conditions, in that we have agriculture, trade, other occupations, occupational guilds, socio-economic inequalities, cultural and economic contacts between the northern and southern India. Though the Aryans had settled down in the north, Aryan culture and civilization gradually infiltrated the south. According to ancient tradition, the Vedic sage Agastya was the first among those who introduced the Aryan customs and ideas into the Dravidian south. Later on, Many Brahmin preachers spread the Aryan culture in the south. Sanskrit became popular and Dravidian scholars studied the Vedic literature of the Aryans. The Andhra kingdom was being ruled by Brahmin kings when Mauryas conquered it in the 3rd century BC. During the Mauryan period, many Buddhists and Jain missionaries came to the southern region. Aryan culture made a deep impact on the people of Deccan kingdoms but its influence on people of deep south was limited. People of Tamil country had accepted the Brahmanic faith, but they did not adopt many of the customs of Aryans. They preserved the uniqueness of their own culture and Tamil language was their pride. This helped the Tamil people to retain some of the distinguishing characteristics of the Dravidian civilization till today. Sources to reconstruct the Sangam age. The source material is of two kinds, literary and archaeological. Literary sources, which is also known as the Sangam literature. Tamil is the oldest language of South India. It possesses a very rich literature. Tamil became a prominent language in the South because of literary excellence of Sangam literature. The word Sangam means assembly. According to early tradition, three Sangams or assemblies of literary men were held at Madurai, the center of great literary activity in Tamil country. It is generally accepted that these assemblies lasted from about 1st century BC to 6th century AD. Many poets Scholars and bards who gathered there produced a large volume of excellent Tamil poetry. These literary compositions were collected and compiled into books called the Sangam literature. Tirukural, the literary works of the third Sangam constituted the most important part of the Sangam literature and they are the main source of information about the life and traditions of the Tamil people. Tirukural was written by Tiruvalluvar. It consists of 1330 couplets organized into 133 chapters. These chapters are grouped into three sections, each dealing with particular topic namely Aram which is Dharma, Porul, Artha and Imbam, Kama. Dharma and Kama are obviously related to ethical codes which people are required to follow and Artha dealt with business ethics and public affairs. The scholars viewed this work as having excellence and features of Sanskrit texts, Dharma Shastras, Artha Shastra and Kama Sutra. Its teachings have been a source of eternal inspiration and guide to Tamilians. It has been translated into many Indian and European languages. Epics and other works Sila Padikaram and Manimakalai are the two famous epics of Tamil literature. The first is regarded as the brightest gem of early Tamil literature. 
These effects threw light on the social and economic life of Tamils up to the 6th century AD. Archaeological Sources The Megaliths The word megalith means large stone, which is mega plus lith. The megaliths are found in all upland areas of the peninsula. Their concentration, however, seem to be in eastern Andhra and Tamil Nadu. The megalithic culture can be traced from 1000 BC to early centuries of Christian era. The megalithic culture is mostly known for its burials. The upland portions of peninsula were inhabited by people whose graves are called megaliths because they were encircled by big pieces of stone. The megalith contained not only skeletons of people who were buried, but also iron tools, arrows, pottery and fragments of rice and other grains have been found. Arrowheads, spearheads, sickles, all made of iron do show the transition from copper and bronze age culture to iron age. The pottery and agricultural tools like spearheads, sickles, etc. give us an idea of culture and sources of livelihood of megalithic people. Inscriptions The art of writing was known to Tamils before the beginning of Christian era. Nearly 80 inscriptions in the Brahmi script have been found in many caves in Madurai region. These inscriptions belong to the period probably 2nd century BC when Buddhists and Jain preachers visited these regions. They provide an example of earliest kind of Tamil, an amazing mixture of two languages, Tamil and Prakrit. The inscription of Karvela, the ruler of Kalinga, says he destroyed a confederacy of Tamil states, that is Tramirdesh Sangatam. The Three Kingdoms, the Chera, the Chola and the Pandya. Southern India, India south of the river Krishna was in those earliest times divided into three major kingdoms, the Chera, the Chola and the Pandyas. The Chera Kingdom The Chera or Kerala Kingdom was one of the earliest kingdoms of the south. It extended along the western coast. The rock edicts of Ashoka refer to the land of Cheras as Kerala Putras. The Sangam literature in Tamil gives names of many ancient rulers such as Udayanjaral, Nedunjaral and Senguttavan. The Cheras were defeated by Pallavas in the 4th century AD. In the 10th century, the control over Chera or Kerala dominions passed to the Cholas. The Pandya Kingdom The Pandyas are also known from very early times and are associated with the southernmost portion of Indian peninsula. The Pandya king Nedunjalin was most prominent among the Pandya rulers. He ruled in the early years of 3rd century AD, about 210 AD. He defeated a confederacy of rulers which included the Cheras and the Cholas. The Chola Kingdom The Cholas, like the Cheras and Pandyas, are known from very early times. They were based in Kaveri Delta and spread along the Coromandel coast. Karikal was the greatest among their earliest historical kings. The Chola kingdom gained great both in territory and influence under him. About the 3rd or 4th century AD, the Cholas suffered severe reverses at the hands of the Pallavas, Pandyas and Cheras. For the next few centuries, they were not a force to be reckoned with. Social Conditions The Sangam literature gives us the true picture of social conditions of the age. Synthesis of the two cultures we have already seen the blend or mixture of two cultures, Aryan and Dravidian, during this age. The stories of Mahabharata and Ramayana were all known to the poets of Sangam age. The Tamil poets were also very much familiar with characters and stories related to Sanskrit literature like Arundhati and Chakura Bird. These Sanskritic ideas and beliefs put into the literature of the Sangam age. The caste. The Brahmins and Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas appear as regular caste or Varnas in the Sangam texts. An ideal king was the one who never caused any injury to the Brahmins. Many Brahmins were celebrated poets and as such they were handsomely rewarded by the rulers. 
Besides gold, Brahmins got cash and land grants from king and noble families. Many Brahmins served the king as judicial officers, although most of them were trained to be priests. The social outcasts and the forest tribes suffered from extreme poverty. They lived from hand to mouth. The hunters and food gatherers lived mostly in hill areas. They worked hard to survive in a difficult situation. Those living in coastal areas were dependent on fishing and salt extraction for their livelihood. The ruling class, the class of warriors and some other classes. The ruling class was called the Arasar. The members of this class had marriage relations with the Velalas, the property people owning the bulk of the land. War booty and income from trade and agriculture produce enabled the king to maintain professional warriors. The occasions for war were many. According to Sangam poets, the refusal of one king to give his daughter in marriage to another was a frequent cause of war. In Sangam poetry, heroes are glorified and wars and cattle raids very often mentioned. The bards constituted a class separate from Brahmin poets. They recited poems praising the rulers and brave warriors. Another class was that of Kadaisayars who worked as agricultural laborers. Their job involved a lot of hard physical work. Their social position was not much different from that of a slave. Institution of Marriage The Tolkapiyam written by Tolkapiyar states the marriage was an important religious ceremony accompanied by many rituals. Naturally, the Aryan culture had now important impact on the institution of marriage. Earlier, the Tamils had a relatively simple conception of marriage. They regarded it as the natural coming together of men and women mainly due to their physical differences. Position of women The joint family system characterized the society. Although some women got good education, their status in society was not equal to that of men. They did not have the right to inherit property. There were ascetics also among women following the Jain and Buddhist tradition. The worship of Kannagi or Pattini suggests that the war of chastity was regarded as the greatest of feminine virtues. In fact, the images of Pattini Devi were being preserved and worshipped by Tamils in their temples until very recently. Religion and Religious Rituals in the early centuries of the Christian era, the ruling and the upper class sections of Tamil society had accepted Brahmanism. The kings used to perform Vedic sacrifices. The Brahmins studied and chanted the Vedic hymns. There were disputations or public discussions on Vedanta and Vedic philosophy. The worship of Vishnu was gaining in popularity, but the chief deity of people of hilly regions was Murugan. Jainism also flourished during this period, along with Buddhism. The two sects enjoyed royal patronage. Dead bodies had begun to be cremated, although the megalithic practice for disposal of body continued. Economic Conditions The Sangam literature gives a complete and true picture of economic conditions as well. Agriculture Agriculture was the main occupation of a large section of people. Land was held by individuals as well as by the state. The land was fertile and there was plenty of grain, meat and fish. The Chola country was watered by the river Kaveri. The Chera region was well known for its buffaloes, jackfruit, pepper and turmeric. The rich did not plough the land themselves. They hired labourers called pariyars for this job. The pariyars traded in animal skins which were used as mat. Trade The rulers had big income from trade transactions also. A large number of crafts and occupations are referred to in Sangam literature. The epic Manimekalai was written by grain merchant of Madurai. The Tamil literature refers to items of trade like spices, sandalwood, pearls, sea products, semi-precious stones and textiles of various types. We also have the information that foreigners or Yavanas visited the coastal towns for trade. 
Metal lamps in different shapes and bottles of wine figure prominently among the articles of trade brought to the India by foreigners. Many Roman traders resided in South India in those days. The ports of Naura, Kananur and Kottayam were among the most prominent ports of India's western coast. The westerners were very much fond of Indian pepper. It is therefore begun to be called as Yamanapriya in Sanskrit. Roman coins of gold and silver were found in southern peninsula suggest that Indo-Roman trade brought great gains to Indian merchants. Other occupations. Among other prominent occupations mentioned may be made of spinning and weaving, metalwork, ornament making and ivory being used for making carved ornaments and other objects. Urayur was a large center of clothes that were made of cotton. According to some poets, the cotton dress was so smooth and shiny that it looked as if made of snake skin. Shipbuilding was another prominent occupation that provided livelihood to many artisans. Occupational Guilds Guilds had become an important institution in the economy of the Sangam age. The guilds defined the rules of the work and controlled the quality and prices of the finished product. The guilds also functioned as bankers and financiers. Guilds also carried out welfare activities and services of many kinds. In each village and town, people following various occupations lived largely apart from one another, although in fairly close proximity. Socio-economic inequalities we see sharp socio-economic inequalities in the age of Sangam. The rich lived in houses made of bricks and mortar, whereas the poor in small mud-walled huts. The Sangam poets gave description of hunters, huts full of bows and shields, and shepherd houses where curds and butter were produced for sale. They also described the living or conditions of learned Brahmins and rich mer merchants. We notice the splendor of large grand buildings which belong to the king and members of the ruling class. The royal priests also lived in the grand structures.